Renee. Hey, Renee. Hey, O. Hey, Carla Renata. How you doing, girl? How you doing, girl? <laughs> Good. Um, so this question is for both of you, and then I have a question for Oak. So this is the first year in history the Tony Awards has been canceled. This is also a year that's so difficult globally for a variety of reasons, but particularly for the Broadway community, because now all of those shows that missed that opportunity of being celebrated with the Tony Awards, all of that has now been pushed back to 2021. And we still don't know if that's actually going to go down. So I wanted to know your thoughts about that. I wanted to know your thoughts about the diversity and how it is seen in the American musical theater genre, because we're dealing with a really big moment here in Hollywood where people are speaking up and speaking out about the types of roles that are and are not available for us on screen and in film. And then for Oak, how did you go from football to musical theater, brother? <laughs> um, uh, I, I, immigrant parents, I guess. Just when I got injured in football, uh, my family's from Nigerian and they're just like, you go and do something, you have to do anything. Um, and and they're like, even if it's theater, we just need you to do something because you, you ain't gonna stay in this house. Uh, so that was the main transition. And that was the, uh, now, uh, real talk though, that's the only other thing that I found myself wanting to apply myself. I thought school was very boring and academia was boring. So I didn't really put energy into it, but that was the only thing that every day I didn't mind showing up and giving every part of myself uh, to do. Um, so that's how I made that transition. My, all my sisters sang, so we would always sing. It was there, I just never utilized it. Um, but um, like sports all also was an expression of self. It's like, yeah, there are other linebackers, but no linebacker can like make the play the way I can make the play. So it just transferred that mindset to anything that I do. It's like every, like, like Nene said, anyone can do anything, but like I know I can only do it the way I can do it. So if you're buying what I'm selling, I'm good. I just have to make sure I'm presenting the purest version of what I'm selling. Um, and then in terms of just like Broadway, I, I did a show called Great Comment and I talked about how Broadway needs to take a knee. And it's interesting how then people didn't want to have the conversation. No one ever talked about that statement, but now we're having it now. And I think it's important. I think um, there's a reckoning that's happening in the theater community to realize that ticket sales isn't a good enough excuse to mute black and brown voices. That's an excuse that has happened for a very long time in our industry. And I think uh, people are realizing that it just can't be about the money anymore that people are seeing past it and that in order to promote and champion diverse voices there will be risk because due to systematic racism the system isn't built to reward you for taking those risks on black and brown voices and stories so i don't know i hope that it does change we've seen a lot of like temporary change and then a couple months or a year when people forget about it things go right back to normal so i think it really depends on us as a people and everyone who's watching in this industry and speaking up to continue this dialogue and keep holding all of these institutions to the standard of this is sustainable change. This is a lifestyle change. What we're asking you don't do for a couple months a year or with a few productions and go back. This is actually going to be a thing that it will be from now on. From now on, you will be taking risks. You'll be taking risks on black and brown voices. And in time, you'll see that people are ready to see it. You just have to present it to them. Renee. Yeah, I, I'm, you know, I, amen. <laughs> amen to that. Um, I, uh, the only thing I'll add is just, just expressing a little bit of the, of the pain in my heart um, for, you know, my brothers and sisters who, uh, I, I mean, that Tony season to me is a gift, you know. Uh, I, I'll just say this, I, Adrian Warren, um, I remember we were nominated um, together when I was nominated for Angelica Schuyler for Hamilton. And, and one of the biggest memories I have is when I'm, I'll start crying when I say it, when I was on the stage doing my speech, she was the first one that jumped up and was clapping for me like this, you know, she was nominated too, but she was like, you know what I mean? And it just reminded me of all those years I was sitting in my house clapping for my friends winning, you know, my husband had to be like, um, you know, LaShawn's won the Tony, it wasn't you. Like he always had to tell me that, that went, that's not you up there, you know? Um, and so um, I was really excited about, you know, clapping for her. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I was really excited about that. And I, I just, you know, I, I was excited about clapping for all of them. And I'm, I'm just praying for us. I'm praying for us all that um, we can get back to work and uh, to the business of, of show and, uh, and that we can celebrate, you know, celebrate the artists in this community. We're still working mm -hmm. at home, 
we're just, uh, we're, we're still working. We never stop working, but the ability to celebrate each other in the ways that we do and to, and to um, support each other's financially in the way that is desired and necessary. We, that's what we can't do. So I, I just have to pray about that. Thank you guys. And just to close it out, I saw both of y'all in Hamilton. Y'all slayed. It was fantabulous. And I'm glad that everybody can get a front row seat on Disney Plus right now. So thank you for answering my questions. I appreciate you. To keep up with The Curvy Critic, like our page here, click that subscribe button, and click that bell for notifications. Love, peace, and hair grease, y'all.